Hello and welcome to the introduction to the sublimation experiment. We see our vacuum apparatus here. We have a mechanical pump that's exhausting the uh, exhaust of our diffusion pump, which is then connected to a liquid nitrogen trap, which then leads to what we call the sublimation region. The sublimation region is where we can attach a cell that's going to be filled with our sample, and that cell is going to have um, a tiny orifice that the uh, sample can escape from the cell. And what we're going to do is sit with the sample at a constant, in a constant temperature water bath at a particular temperature for a given quantity of time that we're going to keep track of. And so then afterwards we're going to see how much mass had left the cell. Okay, before we get into some of the specifics of the experiment, I just want to first begin with the cell, uh, sample cell itself. So we see our cell here, we see a little material, a little hole in the middle where we can add our sample. We're gonna mostly use naphthalene, I think, in this experiment this time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put some naphthalene powder. You can use a mortar and pestle if you need to. We're gonna fill some in there and make a pellet. You don't have to make it super compact. You're gonna make a pellet with this little press here. And then if you get some of the sample throughout the cell, you can tip it upside down tap out the excess naphthalene that may be in the little holes and the, the parts of the cell. So we just want the naphthalene in the center in the cell compartment. So then once that's ready, we're gonna take our orifice. You can see here, there's a tiny little pinhole through the cell. And we're gonna put that on top of an O-ring in the cell. I'm gonna put that right on top of that O-ring. And then we're gonna put the clip here. And let me actually walk back a step. Once this clip is on there, what I would do at this point is get a mass of this entire cell here with those pieces intact. So then later in the experiment, you can take the mass with those pieces still intact. Okay, so you get a mass with these three pieces. The reason why I would say to get a mass with the cell already on it is sometimes you're going to get some deposition of material on top of the cell that you want to make sure that you include in the sample mass before and after our trial because what we're going to do is get the mass before the trial get the mass after the trial okay so then once we have the mass with the cell and the three pieces we're going to take this piece here this is just a reducer we need an o-ring to make our seal and then this, um, well, I'm gonna need two hands to connect it, but this is gonna apply pressure to keep everything intact, everything in place. And then we're gonna put one of these clips on. So in my next video, I'll have the cell already assembled so that we can then connect it to the vacuum system. Before I get on to connecting the cell, another point I'd like to bring up is this is the power supply for the diffusion pump. You can see it's turned on and it's set to about 100 volts. So that's um, supplying the heater motor and the diffusion pump. Oil is gonna heat up, vaporize, condense. We need to flow water through the upper condenser coils. So I have water running. The water actually runs from the far sink across to the back of the apparatus, so it feeds both sides. We have two stations. And then we're just feeding our side and we can see in the sink, we have water for our condenser draining into the sink. And I'm just running with just enough flow of water to keep these coils cool during the experiment. So the diffusion pump, this is actually hot. So like definitely don't be like, oh, is it hot? Like this will burn your hand. So don't touch the lower coils. This here is an emergency cooling valve. It's not the biggest ordeal in the world if we were to lose power, but if we lose power, we just open the lower condenser coils, water will flow through the diffusion pump and cool it down. Um, to mention a couple of our gauges, I have a vacuum gauge right here, nice digital uh, vacuum gauge. This is reading the pressure in the exhaust line of our pump. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of hard to, to read back in there, but it's reading about 31 millitor right now. And so 31 millitor is a pretty low pressure that's being kept by this vacuum pump here. And so the other thing that we can do while we're getting ready to set the experiment up is fill our trap with liquid nitrogen. And uh, we'll get liquid nitrogen there's that big blue tank, if you can see it in the back of the lab. We'll get liquid nitrogen over there. And then we'll fill into here until this is full. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's gonna happen. You're gonna have liquid nitrogen really cold, it's gonna boil, and it's gonna be kind of reactive at first. 
Um, you're just going to see the boiling of nitrogen. Eventually, you can get this cell, this whole trap completely filled. And then we'll have our sample here and our water bath. One thing that you will want to do to set your water bath temperature is just hold the set point in and then change the temperature to whatever your desired temperature is. Uh, the water bath does take a little while to heat up, so probably the first thing you're going to want to do at the start of the day is get your set point to wherever you want it to be at and get that water bath ready to go. Generally speaking, go to your high temperature for trial one, go to a lower temperature for trial two. It's just faster that way when we switch trials during the middle of the lab period. Okay, so I think that's all I wanted to mention for the introduction video. So I'll show you the next video, which will be connecting the cell to the apparatus.